Well, we're actually shooting this not on signature style Saturday, but on the 4th of July. Yep. And we're waiting, I think, for darkness to come and we'll see if we can see any fireworks in the distance downtown. But what I want to talk about today is what I learned this week. And this is a concept that I've actually been, it's been gestating for a while. And I do a lot of interviews and recently I did an interview which will be aired I think July 13th with uh, Jennifer Jewell at, at Cultivating Places on NPR. And I also did one with a doctor who's writing a book about uh, the importance of green and healthy living and gardening in general to your mental health. And, and I've just done a number of different interviews and there's, there's one phrase that I have used and I may have used it in my book, I really don't remember. And that is I talk about my passion for being a garden evangelist. In other words, I just feel evangelical about the mission that is gardening and how it can improve and enhance the quality of your life. And then I realized that that was looking at it in kind of a restricted way. Um, I've been reading a lot and as you know, I kind of read both nonfiction and fiction. And I've been reading, revisiting some old Edith Whartons and some Jane Austen and some period novels, but also uh, re reading little excerpts of other more modern kind of things. I've never read any of Jan Karen's books, the Mitford Files. B but one theme through all of them is the character development and how, no matter how small or how large the environment in which these characters live, nevertheless, they describe these characters in, in great detail and, and I find it just eminently charming as those of us who read these literary works do. And I've started looking at my life through that lens. And I think, you know, quite often people say, oh, Linda, you're so lucky that you have such, you have, you lead such a charming life and you have such a charming existence. And, and I will agree that definitely that is very true, is it not, Stuart? Uh, but I think it's also true that I, try to do what I can to create my own charming existence and be an evangelist for my own life, as it will. It's, it's kind of like the corollary to, if you're not the star of your own life, who is? And if, if you know, you're not living in a movie set, then what is a movie set? And so I now look at my life I look at the people in it in a detailed, uh, more deconstructed way as if they're characters in a novel or characters in a movie. And I do what I can to enhance the charm of my own life in big and small ways. And I, I was, I was talking to someone the other day who said, gosh, isn't it just, isn't it just so nice that you live near your friends and, and that you can walk to each other's homes? And I said, yes. And I said, it's absolutely charming. And that charm was intentional. Um, and I think we can have intentionality to creating a charming life and to then becoming evangelists for our own lives. Yes, it's one of the reasons I love talking about how much I love my neighborhood, because I, because I do. Um, it's why I talk about um, just how wonderful it is that I can walk to these different, these different places where there's great coffee or where I can get a great milkshake because those things enhance the quality of my life and they make me feel so evangelical about my life. Is it, do you, am I making any you sense, are. Stuart? <laughs> and so I think it behooves all of us to be to look for the good in our lives, not granted there's plenty that's wrong, but to really look for the what is good and charming in our lives, whether we live in really tiny towns where that doesn't have much to offer or you are very fortunate like myself and I can walk to my art museum, which to me is just, oh my gosh, isn't that just wonderful? So by looking at our lives through that lens of 
what what is charming about our lives? I, I find it charming in the morning that my next door neighbor enjoys sitting on her porch, on her front porch at the same time that I enjoy sitting on my social patio. And we can wave to each other and say, good morning, you know, and that's, that's all it gets. But I feel immediate community and isn't that charming? And I can tell someone else how much I enjoyed that. And then I become an evangelist for my own life not in a kind of um, nanny nanny boo boo way uh, that I, you know, that I live in a McMansion and all this kind of thing, but just that I am attentive to the fact that I am very fortunate to live a very nice life. And I want to be evangelical about it because it not only communicates to you that I love my life, but it reinforces my own personal message to myself and to my loved ones. Isn't it wonderful? You know, isn't, you know, isn't it wonderful to be in this neighborhood at this point in time in good health on this 4th of July? And it just makes me feel as if I want to shout it from the rooftops. So there you go. There is my lesson for today. What I've learned this week, be an evangelic, uh, evangelical about your own life and see if it doesn't improve it day by day. And as far as what I am reading this week, it's all light and breezy. I've, I've got, I'm a little bit backlogged. I think I told you I was reading Uprooted and, well, just a number of different books. Uh, Your Body Keeps the Score. And I'm actually finishing up all of those this week. So I've got, I've got a number of things on my bedside table. So, so while I'm wrapping those up, I am just enjoying just some light reading because it's really too hot to sit out here on the patio and do anything else. So a lot of you ask what kind of, what magazines do I subscribe to and uh, you know, what kind of things do I, do I read for inspiration? Well, one, and I would say if you're a new gardener and you are looking for something that you can really hold in your hands and read and take to the beach or whatever, if you're a new gardener, I highly recommend a subscription to Garden Gate. Um, because it's full of, of some design information, but a lot of practical information on container gardening, and it's well-rounded. It's well-rounded in terms of perennials, vegetables, trees, design, um, and, and just a lot of tips. Like there's an article in here about Asiatic lilies and then how to grow trees in containers. And... Uh, and it's just good basic information. So if you're a new gardener, I highly recommend getting a subscription to this. And because it's sentimental to me, because the editor is a good friend of mine. And they came out to the other house. Gosh, how many times, Stuart, did they come out and shoot a spread at the other house? And, and periodically, in, in, I can open up any given magazine and there might be a picture of the tulips up front or a container or something that we did. But Kristen Bean Sullivan is a good dear friend of mine and, um, and she does a marvelous job. So that's number one. Now, number two. You may think I'm crazy to be thinking about tulips already, but now is the time. This might be an old catalog. I don't even know. Oh yeah, this is a really old catalog. Uh, but just go on to Color Blends on their website. You can request, I think they are also sending out catalogs again this year, but just go to colorblends.com because now is when you, when you want to think about placing your order for spring blooming bulbs next spring. So even though I'm not gonna plant my tulips or my daffodils or any other spring blooming bulbs until, gosh, around Thanksgiving, I nevertheless want to order them now. They won't ship me, they will not bill me until I actually receive them, which for me is late October typically. But this way I can go ahead and reserve the collection 
options, the blends, the varieties that I want, which oftentimes are sold out if you wait too long. And so I would highly recommend just go to colorblends.com and look, and as I decide, what I want, it's just, man, I'm, I, I knew what I used to want for the other house, but this is a whole different tableau, Stuart. So it's a whole new, uh, it's a whole different playground upon <laughs> which I can play with different colored toys. So there you go. Just go to colorblends.com. Take some time in your reading to look over their website, request a catalog, and decide what you want to have in your spring garden. Well, happy 4th of July, even though you're seeing this on Saturday. So Saturday, it will be, I don't know what date that will be. <laughs> but today is Tuesday, the 4th of July, and this is my 4th of July ensemble, but it could easily carry me all the way through <laughs> July because it is very, very much sundress weather, Stuart. It is just so hot, so it's all about being loose and flowy. This is a dress that I've had for a very, very long time. I think I got it at Old Navy. My earrings, these are kind of fun. These are kind of uh, nostalgic for me because I made these with my friend Jenny, who is a bead buyer for Hobby Lobby. And we made these together. We made, we each made a pair for ourselves. Oh my gosh, how many years ago? 15 years ago, maybe? I'm not really sure. <laughs> my top is a thrifted and Taylor Loft top. And all I've done is just tied it right here around my rib cage and I think it looks okay kind of cute this way but most importantly it protects my arms from the sun because even though I'm in a sundress I did today walk around the neighborhood to get in or at least a portion of my 10,000 steps and what's nice is I can take this off and you see it's just like a spaghetti strap sundress. So if I'm gonna go to the pool or something a little bit later, I can take this off. But nevertheless, it gives me some protection if I want it from the sun. So it's kind of like physical sunscreen. I just exposed my mic, Stuart. Uh -oh. So, uh-oh, all of our secrets. But it's kind of fun, it's kind of flouncy, it's lightweight, and it is uh, July easy breezy. What do you think? Well, Stuart, let's jump right into it with our question of the day. And my query is, how do you illuminate the night? How do you lantern? <laughs> what is your lantern style? Because I have found you know, it used to be that having a lantern hanging in your garden from a shepherd's hook or something was very, very unusual and very distinctive. Early on when I started to garden like 35 years ago, I had them hanging from different wrought iron hooks in my garden in the evening and it, it became one of my signature touches because at that time it was relatively unusual. Now you can find every kind of lantern absolutely everywhere and so my question for you is how do you lantern and what is your lantern vibe so i've got all sorts of different kinds i think the ones that we are most familiar with are the metallic ones the metal ones whether in galvanized like i've got right here or in black wrought iron. These were in my last year's lineup on QVC. I don't think they're available anymore. And quite frankly, and quite honestly, um, there were some quality control issues with them. But nevertheless, I think they're good looking. They're still functional and I really like them. In the front, for me, I definitely would go with the wrought iron black aesthetic, and I'll show that to you a little bit later. But in the back, in my ultimately what I hope to be my outdoor living room and vegetable garden, kitchen garden, that's where I think I will use the galvanized metal finish. I really, really like it. Now, what we put in our lanterns to light them up at night has evolved like everything else. Obviously, we start out with just the basics, basically just candles. And I've got, the, I love this one. 
This one is just kind of like, oh, I don't know, a chandelier, a standing yeah. chandelier of votive like. candles. I got this at at Williams Sonoma many, many years ago, and Stuart was asking me why the votives inside looked kind of wonky, and I told him it's because they were out here too long, and I think they melted some. <laughs> So, so obviously that is one of the drawbacks <laughs> of using wax candles. Likewise, it is one of the drawbacks of using battery operated candles that have a wax veneer. So you guys have seen these before. These are the tapers that I like to use if you unscrew the base then you put in batteries right here. The downside to that for exterior lighting is number one. This does have a beautiful realistic looking wax veneer, but, but it too will melt. I mean, <laughs> when it gets really hot, it will melt as will any kind of pillar candles that you might wanna use. The other downside to these is that the batteries just don't seem to last very long. So that's kind of another detractor. Now, are they flameless? Are they safer? for loved ones who might not want to be around. You may not feel comfortable them being around an open flame. We used to get these for my mother all of the time when she was listed, when she was living in assisted living. Then definitely yes, or if they're near something precious. But they do have their downsides. So enter a third iteration and you guys probably are familiar with these, but for me, it was an aha moment. I wonder if just like there are solar freestanding lights and lanterns for outside, I wondered if they made solar candles. They may, you know, the power may be stored in a battery, but nevertheless, are they solar powered and uh, rechargeable? And indeed, they are available. And what I love about them is that they are automatically programmed to come on at dusk and turn off at dawn. So I've got these and they kind of, to me, look a little bit like votives on steroids. So they're a little bit larger, which makes them a little bit more impactful, but you can put them in your lantern. So if your lantern style is wood, and this could go modern, it could go kind of industrial or farmhouse chic. I kind of like the little black appointment. Look to it. Yeah, 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 in the middle. And of, and of course, at night, if they're outside, you really can't tell. Oh, that's true. Huh? But, but, but the, but the aesthetic of this, the wood is great. It would also be great. We used to actually use these periodically on my husband's boat at night. We would use these on, if we were out canoeing at night, we would canoe with one of these illuminated on the bow. How charming is that? <laughs> I think we did it once or twice and it was very charming. But you might like something a little bit more or ornate. This has got kind of a Moroccan vibe, a Moroccan slash 60s kind of vibe and this one actually was thrifted and it was gifted it was thrifted and gifted to my friend deborah who loaned it back to me so that i could show what it looked like and i think it's just really beautiful but it too has one of these solar powered lights in it so you can leave this out they have no wax coating. Yes, they're plastic, and I don't necessarily like that, but nevertheless, they're more enduring. And unlike the ones that use real batteries, they just seem to last a little bit longer. And of course, I will put links in the description box below, and this gives you kind of a heads up, you guys. We have tried to consolidate the links. So all of the links are in one line and you click on that link and it will show you what we talked about in today's video. If I have missed a link or something, just let me know and we will add it in because there's lots of links. However, you can also go to my main shopping, uh, my main shopping category and divide it up. There will be like garden, house all we're trying to uh really 
create an anthology of all of the book recommendations that you guys have made so we can put them all there and list them so you can go into one comprehensive marketplace mm -hmm. if you will to find those things but of course if you can't find it if it's difficult for you to navigate then just put something in the comments below and we'll try to get that link to you and by all means please comment below and let me know how you illuminate the night um, and what really has worked for you and if you're kind of changing your aesthetic over time because I think for me it does it also tends to change from summer into winter now I don't have an example of it but I think recently I saw at Target on Serena in the Serena and Lily catalog and a number of different places that there's also wicker lanterns that you can use with again a faux candle light in the center um, those are really good looking and have a really coastal vibe they're kind of an elevated uh, coastal grandmother chic look, and I think those are kind of fun. But why not just put a candle inside of a real basket? <laughs> because it too has openings that that can kind of shine through so I think that's kind of a fun that's kind of a fun thing now Stuart we're, what we're gonna have to do is I guess just wait for nightfall mm -hmm. to see if these do just automatically come on if we walk this way a little bit and this was kind of fun because uh, my husband hubs was lamenting that unlike so many of our neighbors who already have their string lights out i don't have my string lights up yet because i'll be putting mine in the backyard uh, and i just don't have them up yet because the backyard is still in process so he was lamenting that and i said well i may not have string lights but I have a very, very delightful, Stuart, if you'll come down this way. All right, we're gonna do it without a snap today. Yes, don't, don't trip. I have a very delightful string of lanterns that goes up the stairs and will, when it gets dark, automatically be illuminated at night and you can follow them all the way up to the front door. And not only will they be, I think, just brilliant and wonderful in the summertime when so many people are out walking and strolling, but how cool will it be around Halloween and in the snow and at different times when hopefully the winter light will be strong enough to regenerate them so that they, even in the low, weak light of winter, will automatically come on. Now, in addition to solar-powered votive lights and sol solar-powered pillars, they also have available solar-powered lanterns, not just the candles that you set inside your own lantern, but the lanterns themselves. I got two of these and I think they're really, really great. They were very, very popular. Now, when you get them and they come in sets of twos, there is a black wrought iron bracket that you secure to the wall and then the lantern hangs on the bracket. But I decided that I really didn't want to put any holes in the brick or holes in the wall. So what I did was just get, I just Googled two to three foot shepherd hooks poor little darling, <laughs> two to three foot shepherd hooks. I installed them myself. They actually could be a little bit taller if I wanted them to be, but this way they can hang just on either side of the door and I don't have to worry about putting holes into the mortar or into the brick. Now, the other reason I like them is I think they just look so cute and can, can you just imagine what they look like in winter, dusted with snow and with greenery and berries around Around them I think they'll just they'll just be absolutely festive and celebratory and very very delightful but for passers-by just like the family that came by just now we promise no children were harmed during the no making children of this, were harmed in that just, it's just it's just hot out and they have a they have a new baby um, so just like the family that passed by when others pass by at night and we have a lot of evening strollers and early morning joggers 
even on this side, on this, uh, on this facade of the house, that faces south, this faces east. Even on uh, at this orientation, there will be, it will illuminate the night, what can I say, or the early, early morning. So I think that's important. And certainly, I will be very conscious of that when I do the back. I want to make sure that it too is lit up. Looking better that way. Yeah, it's, it's looking better. I have, to, I have to wait on people now, Stuart. I know sometimes you guys think that I just have people at my beck and call all the time, but no, no, I, I do not. And some of this stuff, uh, I, well, I have to save up for it, Stuart. I have to save up for it before it can be executed. But one thing about these guys, Javier and Sergio, I'm waiting for them. You know, they're such troopers working out in the heat, mowing our lawns and edging and and doing just the back breaking work in the heat. So kudos and great uh, words of appreciation to them for all they do for us. So there you go. Here are some solar powered lanterns just for you. You know, whenever you're working with someone, I think it's important to know their value set. Mm -hmm. And you wanna make sure that you are like-minded about mm -hmm. the values that you want to articulate and that you wanna communicate. And as you guys know, I have kind of a value set about thrifting, reusing, recycling, repurposing. Mm -hmm. And so when Leah came to join the team, we talked pretty extensively about that. Yes, we did. Yeah. And I think that it's important for me that that everybody on the team kind of has that same mindset. So this may seem like an odd segue to our topic, which is to discuss a little bit about the things that I am going to be recommending for Amazon Prime Day, mm -hmm. which is on July 11th and yep. 12th, yep. and Leah has really helped me with that. Yeah. Um, but first, let's talk a little bit, and, and I'm not being judgy here, but let's just talk a little bit about about our consumption philosophy. Yes. I kind of have a hierarchy of, of of how I think about things. And please, here's a question of the day. You guys let me know what lens you look through when you're thinking about acquiring something. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, as we were discussing about this, you were actually taking notes. Yes, I was. About <laughs> my, my, my hierarchy of consumption. Or our my sustainability philosophy. manifesto. Yes, yes, our sustainability <laughs> manifesto. I love the word manifesto. <laughs> and number one on it was... Using what you already have. Or do I even need it? Yes. Do yeah. I even need yep. it to begin with? So there have been a couple of incidences in this kind of transformation from the fairy tale house to the mm -hmm. storybook cottage where I've really had to make at some decision points, make some determinations about, about acquiring something. Mm -hmm. But you guys know for years I have shared with you that Hubs and I have had some property in Salida, Colorado forever mm -hmm. and we planned to build there. And we, we never got around to it because uh, kids going to colleges, mm -hmm. expensive colleges, and, and economic downturns, and aging parents, and things like that. So just when we are getting ready to make a move there, we discovered that the, the area contiguous to our six acres was going to be developed into a neighborhood. Oh my goodness. So at that point, we had a decision to make. Do it, it, what was our dream? And our dream was now basically had been kind of sullied. It, mm -hmm. We were not able to make our dream manifest because of some things beyond our control. So we decided that, okay, do we really need a second place? Mm -hmm. Do we really need a vacation home in Salida? Mm -hmm. And we decided that no, especially since we've got a son and daughter-in-law that live in Denver. <laughs> and, and it wasn't what we had imagined. 
and we didn't want to live in a neighborhood mm -hmm. and um and we're we were that much older and i'm and i don't want more really to take care of so mm -hmm. in order to leave lead a bigger life I want a smaller life template. Yeah. So that was one of our first decision points mm -hmm. was, do we even need it? Yeah. And we decided as much as we love Colorado, we can go to Colorado whenever we want. Mm -hmm. And we can stay in all sorts of different places, including mooching off of my son and daughter-in-law when we go. So that was kind of our first decision point of an aha moment. Okay, do we really need it? Mm -hmm. um, particularly at our at this point in time. Yeah. The second thing was, and you and I have talked about this a lot, mm -hmm. was my, I have always had a dream, just like Salida, Colorado, I always have a dream of having a greenhouse. Yeah. And we moved to the cottage, and I think it's important then, this is kind of life lessons, I guess, from one generation to another. Because she, you just, tell us a little bit. You just moved yeah, into an I, apartment. Yeah, I'm literally thinking that. I just moved into an apartment here in Oklahoma City. So I've been, we've been talking about this a lot. Even with Amazon ordering things for my new space and what do I need, what do I not need. Yeah, what um, do you not need. And being intentional with those choices. Yeah, and I think it can be as something as grand as a piece of property or, or, or a greenhouse, which mm -hmm. you guys know I've shared with you that I decided based on a lot of things here at the college, cottage. And the fact that, again, I can mooch off of a friend, of a friend who has a greenhouse. I don't really need a greenhouse. Mm -hmm. I can get by without one. It would be beautiful if I were 40 years younger. I might, mm -hmm. you know, I might want one. Uh, but I decided that I can still live my dream of a life without one. So I decided, in other words, there have been a number of decision points mm -hmm. where I have decided Less is more. Yeah. I, I, I don't necessarily need that. Mm -hmm. To live my bigger life, I need less. And so that's basically, I think, the first, uh, the first threshold in, in my consumption philosophy. Mm -hmm. And I think yours too. Yeah. Number one, ask yourself the question, do I really need it? Yep. Now, there's an exception to every rule. And if it's a plant... <laughs> <laughs> and do I really need it for my yeah. garden? Then, well, yeah, maybe. Um, so there's exceptions to everyone. Well, and I think it goes back to being intentional. Like you decided with the backyard that the greenhouse wasn't the best use of the space, that you wanted more living area space. And so in being sustainable, we're being more intentional with our choices. Because yeah. not only is it the greenhouse, but it's all the packaging that comes with that. It's, all the things that... You yeah. know, all the trash and yes. recycling that yes. we talked about earlier this yeah, week, too. all of the so. residual things mm -hmm. that, now you can, you know, there's probably a sustainable way to build it, but but a lot of it is how, how not only how, how much stuff mm -hmm. would it consume, but how much of my time would it consume, yes. and yeah. think time that maybe now I want to dedicate to something else, and because when I was looking at at the pros and cons of it, what I really wanted, and we're gonna talk about this a lot on Sunday, is ultimately what the backyard is going to look like. Mm -hmm. And I had my vision, and a greenhouse didn't necessarily fit into that vision. I tried to push it, I tried yeah. to fit a square peg into a round hole, yep. and it just wouldn't go, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. And sometimes we, you just need to come to a point of acceptance. So first of all, the first threshold is, do I really need it? Mm -hmm. The second thing we decided, do you remember what it was? Was it thrifting? Not yet, even before that. Can we get it for, for free? free? Yeah. <laughs> then the other thing, talk about this a little bit, Leah, because I've done most of the talking about, you know, I was one of 10 kids mm -hmm. and we used lots of hand-me-downs yep. and things. And there's nothing wrong with hand-me-downs. So talk a little bit as a person that's just moved into a new apartment yeah. about getting things for free or gifted from others. Love it. I've gotten things from you. I've purchased and been given furniture from friends. One of the best ways to be sustainable is, yeah, to pass things along to other people who might need it more than you, which everyone has been so generous. And my home is filled with things that I can say, Linda gave me that, Ben gave me that, so-and-so right. gave me that. And it makes everything way more special and 
yeah, reusing items. I'll cut clothes when I don't like the way they fit anymore. We talked about that while thrifting um, to make them reusable. So I'm all about that. And keepsakes and, and things that you get from others is hand-me-downs. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you can't put your own signature style on it. Yeah, true. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So the other thing I think that we talked about is, okay, you can get it for free. And, and I would include things like, I've gotten so many plant starts for my garden, yes. um, things of that nature. We, you know, you can, I know when we moved from the big house into this small one, I, I, I was giving away so much, you know, mm -hmm. so much stuff. And have, Stuart, you were in on some oh, of that. Yeah, yeah your daughter, <laughs> Julia, you I think, got stuff. some stuff. Yeah, got some stuff. Because if you're not using it, it's just like even a plant, if it's in the wrong place, is a weed. Mm -hmm. Okay, even something that may be beautiful, if you don't need it in your home, it's just an impediment to yeah. living a bigger life. And yeah. so you kind of get rid of it and give it to somebody who can really use it and, and who can... I don't know, optimize its value, yes. I guess. And then and then beyond that, we talk, and this is where you and I really connected was in thrifting. So talk about I love, that. I love thrifting, like we've done for clothes. I've been thrifting this week for a shelf for my bathroom. Almost bought one online, but I was like, this is something that would be cuter if I thrifted it. It'll have more wear and tear, and it'll go with the space character. better. Yeah, mm -hmm. character, yeah. So... I'm all about thrifting. I feel like I'm better at thrifting clothes than I am. I feel like you're good at thrifting items. So we may have to go on a little trip and thrift yeah. some. And I think it's also about, I like things with patina. Mm -hmm. I like things that have been previously loved. So how much of your, is any of your outfit thrifted? Yeah, well, this is thrifted by my friend who's a vintage seller. So she found it for me. Um, and yeah, this shirt, I think I've just had forever. A lot of them I've just had forever and used and reused but this best is thrifted yes yeah yeah and I think that's I, I think that it's just special and you can and again it doesn't mean you sacrifice style or you sacrifice mm -hmm. panache for you know when you are thrifting yeah. because on the contrary I think you find one-of-a-kind pieces that mm -hmm. you can't find if you There's more are, yeah know. if you're constantly not that I'm bashing it but if you're constantly buying you know all of your things at Nordstrom Rack which I do yes. or at Target or whatever you can find really really unique things yeah. and back to sustainability that is today I was shopping on Depop and there's all these pieces I was looking on Amazon and then I was finding pieces like them on so, Depop. So, okay, what is Depop? Depop is a site, it's like Poshmark. People okay. sell and resell, but Depop has more vintage pieces. And so, yeah, they're pieces that you could never find anywhere. And just looking at the amount of clothes that are at Forever 21 or at the mall compared to the one piece that you can find at a thrift store or online, it's so much more special to find something special. So, And so many things just end up in the trash or they end up mm -hmm. in the dark recesses of our closets, yeah. never to be worn again. Yeah. And if I can't wear them, then I want somebody else to be able to wear them. Pass yeah, that's them not on, just, Linda. Yeah, that's, Pass well, I've, I've already passed a lot of some things. I'm good about more passing More to come, more stuff. to come. <laughs> uh, but that said, I have some things that I've worn Gosh, since I was in my early I 20s. I love that. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, and that, you know, and then what, what was once popular comes back again. It does. So, it's all so that, back. yeah, so that makes you also kind of au courant and mm -hmm. on trend <laughs> when the cycle comes full circle. So, but so then this is a long winded way. I, I acknowledge that um, <laughs> to talk about the fact that there are certain things, however, that you cannot find yep. <laughs> thrifted or you're looking for something. That have ex that has exact dimensions yes. or has an exact aesthetic. or you're looking for so long and you need it and you need it. <laughs> That's where I'm at with some things for my apartment. Yeah. I've like been looking, been waiting, right? But I'm at the point where I'm like, I just need to buy that. And how often have we gone out and you shop for something? And then, and by the way, this is not a commercial for Amazon or <laughs> any online, but it but it applies to just online shopping mm -hmm. in general. You know, you go to a store and how many times do you end up with five things yep. to the one thing you needed, mm -hmm, you know, and, sure. and you end up and the ratio is not good. You end up with a lot of stuff that you don't necessarily yep. need. Whereas I feel if I'm if I'm online and I am really looking for something. Yep. So I am specifically looking 
for a product I just found. <laughs> Something that uh, will take the etch marks out of honed marble. Yes. Things like that. Okay, if I'm looking for a very, very specific product like that, I don't even know where to look. Mm -hmm. And I don't particularly want to go to a mega box store mm -hmm. to find something like that, that I can be targeted looking online. A lot of times that includes Amazon for very specific yes. solutions to problems because Same. that's how I, I kind of think how I'm solving mm -hmm. or how I'm spending my money these days. Yep. My disposable income is on problem solution or something that is, that is just inherently beautiful or mm -hmm. that fits in a certain space in, in, yes. in the cottage. Yep. Again, I'm not, I am not being judgmental about yep. anything thing if if but I'm also not saying no you I'm an absolutist do not shop mm -hmm. from Amazon do not shop from Wayfair do yeah. not shop no I'm not saying any of that yes I I'm saying that we go through first of all just due diligence yeah. of what we need and what we really don't need which by the way will change depending on how old you are mm -hmm. you know and whether or not you have kids so we're going to be showing some things because it is Amazon Prime Day. Yeah. And, and quite accidentally, I have just found some great things on mm -hmm. Amazon Prime that I was just blown away by. And some of you guys know, including plants. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. But Amazing. some other things. So you've also found some things. I was going to say, even my nightstand, that is a good example of something that I've been looking out for a perfect nightstand. I knew in my head exactly what I wanted, and I've been waiting and just couldn't find it. And I finally bit the bullet and bought it on Amazon yeah. Yeah. and got exactly what I pictured and spent a little more than I wanted to. Right. But I love it and I will keep it for the rest of my life rest like I have life. no doubt that it yeah, will go with me wherever I go yeah it's it, so it, cute it's pretty cool yeah yeah the, the, the other thing is is let's let's face it some of the stuff you find when you go thrifting is of a vintage or, or an aesthetic mm -hmm. that I really like that's a little more traditional yeah um not a lot of the younger West Elm yeah. anthropology kind of aesthetic that yeah. appeals more to people your age um, and then the other thing I think that at least quelled some of my reservations about shopping online is that it doesn't let out small business owners. A lot of the things that you buy online are provided by mm -hmm. small business owners because even Etsy got out. Who did it? Did Etsy get bought out by Amazon? Oh, I wouldn't know. This. Yeah, I don't know, but you yeah. can even find thing. You can find things through Etsy. There's but I, Amazon Homemade now. Too, yeah, or... there's there's all sorts of places that it's just a it's a platform for small businesses that are trying to navigate e-commerce mm -hmm. yeah. in the digital age. It's so true. It's how they also have to morph um, to those of us that don't want to get out so much yeah. and don't want to drive so much and yeah. during COVID I think that also taught us a lot about about just it's just about being smarter yeah just about being smarter more intentional yeah yes more intentional and again we're not saying that in kind of nanny nanny way just but in a very practical practical way yeah. of of looking through the lens of how much do I need and sometimes I get as much satisfaction out of coming up with the with the option of oh you don't need that at all mm -hmm. you don't need that at all you are just perfectly fine and it sometimes that's every bit as satisfying so that was kind of a long winded ex explanation of of our my philosophy on consumption yeah. that when I started talking with Leah that she shared because it's kind of a it's kind of a value set. So we're going to be sharing some some of our some of my tried and true things that yes. I've had forever that yeah, I've shared that with you guys. That you will have forever too. That you will be excited to know are going to be on Amazon on Prime. Sale, yeah. Yeah. And I I only share things that I either have tried myself that I really legitimately love or I think that they are they are worth what you spend on them. Yeah, that are sitting in this house right now. <laughs> yeah, that are sitting in this house right now. Uh, should we give a tease? Should we give a tease? Leah found out that that those little metal side campaign coffee tables that you have how many of? <laughs> I don't know. 
<laughs> I don't know. I, I have at least four. I know. That's more than I would guess. They're going to be uh, on sale. Yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> yes, they're they're on sale on Amazon yeah. Prime. So if you've wanted more than one, uh, but but they're great. They're Maybe flexible. They're store. multi-purpose. <laughs> I actually like them a lot. Too. They are so cute. And then, then yeah, they're they're more of maybe scatter them throughout your house. Scatter them throughout, the, and they're kind of an, an English. They are. Yeah. They have kind of an old English vibe, which is mm -hmm. kind of my vibe. But so check them out. There will be things that speak to my aesthetic that speak to a younger aesthetic because I've been looking at a lot of stuff for my kiddos who just bought a new house, but perhaps more importantly, things that solve problems. And when I can find something, particularly technical things that can solve problems, I am all over it. And I am all over talking about this right now. So thank you guys for hanging in there with us. I hope you find this valuable. Please check out some of the things that you can find on Amazon Prime Day, which is July 11th and 12th. And we will see you later. Well, I don't know about you, but I am absolutely shocked and awed by how amazing these look. Telling the difference between the real candlelight and the faux candlelight is almost impossible. The ease, they just came on, didn't they, Steve? Yeah, yeah. I was... Now, it, it did have to get pretty, pretty dusky. It yeah. really had to get pretty dark before they illuminated, but I didn't have to come out and turn them on. I didn't have to do anything. So just imagine how nice that will be in the autumn and in the winter when it's cold out. Uh, I don't have to come out and turn them on. They automatically will will just start twinkling. You look like you're surrounded and, by and fire sparkling. Right now, because of all the, flame, all, the I, all the movement of yeah, the light. Yeah, and, and it just seems magical <laughs> the way they just come on. Yeah. And hopefully, in like I say, you don't have to deal with a remote. You don't have to deal with batteries. You don't have to turn them on. It's just like magic. They just illuminate the night sky. And how fun is this for passers-by or joggers in the morning? How fun it is for me to just look out my window and see my walkway That's illuminated. That's true too, right? Yeah. So I don't know about you, but I am absolutely smitten with these. We'll see how they perform in the long run. The link is below, but if you are as enamored as I am, well, just tell me what you think.